In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to circle weave and to make your own frames. Let's get started. So this frame I first made um, as an experiment to see what I can, if cardboard can withstand um, the yarn for for weaving with a circle loom. So it did, um, but the thing is I used two layers of cardboard and I soon realized that I probably should use about three or four layers and this really helps. So so once you've decided on the width um, or how wide you want it to be, you're going to cut out a few forms. Um, I would recommend between three to four layers um, for the base of the loom. After that, you're going to cut out the inner circle of the loom. So I like to prepare about um, one to two inches. I think two inches is pretty good because uh, you're going to be cutting in about one centimeter there. Um, so we're going to go in and I'm just going to mark around the entire circumference of the circle and mark in two inches inward. And this is going to be the marking of where we're going to cut. So you can use a pencil or pen and just, I just freehanded the circle here. Once you're satisfied with the markings, you can cut it out and then you can use this first form as a template for the others. So you can use this to trace and cut out and you can again use from three to four different layers and then we're going to put them all together. It's important that all of the forms or the layers that you create are fit nicely on top of each other. So you just want to make sure that if there's any bits or parts that are a little bit uneven, that you even them out. And after you've done that, you're going to use some hot glue and then you will just, yep, stack them up on top of each other. Just make sure that that glue is really hot and from each, on each layer that you're doing that you're really just pushing down, making sure that those forms and the layers are really stuck onto each other. And if you have to add any additional glue, go ahead and just go in there in between um, each layer or whatever parts just to make sure that they stick. The key thing is to make sure that this uh, form has a lot of structure. The next step, you're going to go around again the outer rim of the circle and mark every quarter inch until you get to the end. It was a bit strange going around with the, you know, the flat straight ruler around the round curve, but you know, I just, you know, you got to do what you got to do. So um, yeah, just move it all the way around slowly and just, tr you know, go from the last marking to the next one and you'll make it through the, the whole thing. Now the next step, taking a sharp edge or uh, scissors, you're going to cut into each of those um, markings, those quarter inch markings for about one centimeter in, and you're going to cut down all the way around the, the circle. Once you finish, I like to pick one, any one, any of the, the markings, and then I like to use that as, mark it as the starting point. And then I'm going to count from that first point that I've marked, to get to the center, so to get to the opposite side. So I just want to make sure that I'm picking, um, I'm trying to search for the center of the circle. Now that I've marked the center line, I'm going to go ahead and start um, dressing the loom. So we're going to start here by just knotting an end of the yarn, and then you're going to wrap it around one of the points where you've marked as the first or the beginning point. Once you've secured the warp yarn, you're going to now move it across to that second point. To get to the other side, you're going to go under the loom and then bring it back around to the next point. So you want to make sure you keep those yarns nice and taut and organized. So as you can see here, I'm just bringing it around. I'm going to secure it through that, the slit. When dressing a circular loom, you want to make sure that you're organizing the direction that you're going in. So what I like to do here is to draw on the loom the direction that I'm going to warp the, warp the yarns in. So here I'm going to go, I'm marking it here towards the right, moving the yarn under the loom and then going and proceeding to the next yarn to the right of the starting point. And then you're just gonna continue doing this um, as you continue to dress the loom. 
I follow the same rule when doing it on both sides, so I just wanted to make sure that I'm following the arrows going in the same direction and still going under and pulling it over and securing the yarn. So it's important during this time that you are securing the tension. Um, and so as you can see here, I'm always supporting the yarns and using my thumb or an index finger to help hold the tension as you're doing it. So you're going to continue this all the way around and it's going to create this spoke in the middle um, and then we'll organize it after that. You can probably tell from other, my other tutorials or videos is that I really love cardboard and how versatile it is. And, you know, honestly, I don't think it's the best material to create a circle loom, but I mean, if this is the only material you have at home, then why not use it? And you can practice weaving and practice designing stuff on it. So I found that like after half of the circle was woven uh, or dressed that it started to warp, which F, but with the three layers, I think that it kept its shape pretty well and it could add a little bit of character to the weaving. So just something to think about. Now, once you've reached the end, you can cut that fine, a little bit of the yarn, maybe leave about six inches of the yarn. And you can see here that when you're pulling on the yarn, it really controls that center piece. So here's where you can really control, you know, how high you want the spoke to be or where you want it to be exactly. I like to give it a, pull, a tight pull and then I'm going to just wrap it around um, one of the parts of the last section here. And I'm just going to tie it around a few times just to make sure it's secured, make it knot, and then cut off the loose end. So as I mentioned before, there is some warping to it, especially towards the middle. Here I use three layers, and I think maybe next time I might use four to see to really see if it can hold in place. But overall, I'm pretty happy with it, and I think it held up a lot better than the first one that I made. So um, yeah, I think this is good. Once you're ready, grab the yarn that you want to use to start weaving and then we'll get started. So I like to start from just picking one section and grabbing two sets of yarn and going in and under and over on these every two yarns together. And so this helps it be less dense as if you were do going to pick every other yarn up. So here I like to just go in and out of two. So every yarn a warp yarn there are two sets for each and I like to just weave with those two now you're going to continue this this is a gradual this will take a little bit of time more time than usual on a, um, a vertical loom um, but it, it, once you get around it it will become a bit more um, normal uh, for me I found it really awkward to weave circular because I'm so used to weaving vertically but you know you just have to do it slowly take your time don't skip any warp yarns because this is going to help like right here I'm tightening up the spoke so as you move the warp around it's easier for you to tighten it up and get a more um, center formation there after the second or third row of warp or sorry of weft you can start seeing the formation of those lines um, in the weaving and you can start seeing your pattern appear so you know don't give up after the first row or second row it takes a little bit of time to gradually for it to gradually appear and to make the design that you want so go ahead, just take your time and do it It also does take a, f a little bit of time for the spoke itself, for the center formation to really get tidy. So, you know, give it a few rows of, um, of plain weave. And then after that, you can start adding other types of uh, techniques that you like. There really is so much experimentation that you can do with the colors and the techniques you're using. For example, in this top piece here, I'm using, I'm following the shape of the, the loom um, of this design in this kind of circular motion and here I'm using a lot of different yarns and textures of the same color um, but I'm also just using sumac weave um, so here it's um, it's up to you what you decide to, to do with it now here I'm, I'm trying to create a continuous um, design that's not in a section it's just gonna I want it to be in a very flowing motion however here in this next part I'm creating something that's sectional. As you can see, the design is only focused in these um, 10, 12 square um, rows, warp yarns. And so here I'm, I'm separating and dividing 
um, the sections that I'm going to do. So unlike the bottom part or this orange piece on the bottom, um, this I'm just focusing the design in one section. When it comes to the back of the weaving, you have the same issues as normal weaving and you just want to make sure that you're tucking away those yarn ends and that you're tidying it up in the back. Now you can follow the similar tutorial with creating a loom, a circular loom, without cutting out the center and just using one panel um, and use and create something like this. Now what I like about this one is that it's very simple, it's small, and you can still get some weaving done on it. Now there are pros and cons to using this, same as the other one like this, okay? There are some pros and cons to this. The pro is that it's super simple to make. You just cut the incisions and then tie a knot, dress the loom, and then you can start weaving. Now the only difficult thing about using this type is that you can only work from one side. You can't see what's happening on the other side of this, the final, um, this, um, the final design that you create. Okay, so I like to use this side here as the back of the loom, and then when you take it off of the loom, then it's kind of a big surprise. Now you might be wondering why is it two-sided? Am I going to continue on the other side? No. Um, with this, I like the idea of cutting this off. Um, the problem that I had run into before was that I didn't have, I had just looped the yarn end here, and it just wasn't enough. And on these cardboard looms, it's quite difficult to just pop off the yarn without disturbing the pattern here. So therefore, I just did it with, um, I double warped the back here so that I, at the end, I can just cut off the ends and just tie them or send the warp yarns back into the piece. Um, this was one of the samples that I created. And this is what I mean that um, so although it wasn't like here, so when I took them, them off of the warp, or off of the loom, you can see that the ends still stay and they hold on to the, to the uh, weaving, but it just, I just didn't, didn't like the finish uh, appearance of it like this. So I think cutting the ends off would be a lot better and help secure the yarns a bit better too. I found the biggest difference is when weaving the two. Um, I find that it's a little bit more comfortable weaving this one where both the front and back are exposed. Um, but when weaving with just one that you're weaving in only one side, um, it's it's the same. You know, you just weave plain weave in and out between the yarns, and you can decide: is it will you weave just between one warp yarn, every other yarn, every two yarns? It's up to you. Um, but I do find that first one is a little bit more comfortable, but this one is also quite easy to use. I hope that this tutorial was helpful for you, and if you have any questions, then please leave them down below in the comment section, and I'll be happy to help. You can check out the full tutorial at fibersanddesign.com, and please subscribe and like if this tutorial was helpful for you. Thank you so very much for watching. Please take care, and see you next time. Bye!